this episode, we're going to have a look at Rails organization, and more specifically, when we have business logic that we would like to organize in our Rails application to make it a bit more maintainable, then we can take several different approaches. One approach is that we can move all of the business logic into modules. Another approach is singletons, and then we also have classes, and you also have concerns that you can use in controllers or models. And so for this application, we're going to take a simple example, and we're going to look at each one of these and if we would use them or not. For modules, we typically have a collection of method or constants, and this is going to be helpful in encapsulating an idea into something that can be reusable. And so this will lead to namespacing, where we can organize our classes, methods, constants into a format where all of the logic around a certain idea is put in one place. And you can have multiple classes that are namespace under the modules, which will make it very helpful to keep the code organized. And this is also helpful in the context of our models where we can include them into our classes or the models to add shared functionality. And then we have a singleton pattern, which I really don't like using for code organization because it does restrict a class to only one instance. So this is going to be useful for holding application settings. So for example, if you had something like a log management or other situations where you need to create one instance of something, and it's going to be shared across all of the different requests. I wouldn't put the business logic of my application in a singleton because that's typically going to be applicable for that particular request. And then we have classes, which is more of the quote service object approach. This service object approach is really just a plain old Ruby object. With this approach, I normally have a single public method and it'll be called call, perform, or something similar. Depending on what I'm actually doing, I would prefer call or perform depending on the situation. A call would make some kind of external request or it could do some other kind of business logic. However, when I'm taking this approach and I use the call method name, I do not mutate any records. I could do something like sending out emails or making a API request to some kind of external service. However, I won't update any records or mutate any records within my application. If I do have to mutate records, then I would use perform as my method name. That way, just at a glance, I can see what's going to potentially happen if this method is called. And I really like the classes approach because it does help organize the business logic. Kind of a mix between the modules and classes in a Rails application, we have concerns. And concerns are great for keeping the controllers or the models clean. They are highly reusable, so depending on the context, we could reuse these across multiple models or multiple controllers. And a lot of people don't like using concerns for organizing the business logic, but I do because it provides contextual clarity. And by that, I mean, if you have something around user subscriptions or something similar, that could be a lot of business logic that you would normally have in a model. And even if it's in only one model, the reason why I like this approach is because all of the different methods can be kept within one concern. Even if we only ever include this in one model, everything around that user subscription would be kept in one place. There's been many times when I've worked on a model that has had a thousand lines or even a few hundred, and it's really hard to see how the things interact with one another and how they relate. That could lead to a lot of bugs in your application as you are refactoring or changing things or adding in new features. So the example that we're going to look at in this episode is a simple model. We have a post and a post has a content attribute. It is a text data type. And basically what we are doing is before we save the record, we are calling this text formatter. The text formatter will loop through all of these substitutions and it'll update the content with the key and value. And the substitutions are basically taking the new line characters, converting them over to a break, and any kind of space is converting over to the HTML format of the ampersand MBSP semicolon. And so this is a very simple example, 
but you can imagine if you did have a larger model and you had hundreds of lines, you may not really know what substitutions is used for and also the text formatter. The text formatter could be very far down within this file, but up at the top, you'll see where it's actually being called or used. So something like this, I would not use a singleton pattern because it doesn't really fit what we are trying to accomplish. However, a module or a class or a concern could be a good opportunity to refactor this bit of code so that it's contextually kept together and this model would then be a lot cleaner. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.